Hey guys, want to learn how to make 3D miniatures that you can use in your games? Well, I am not the best person to teach you, but I am a resource. So today, we're going to learn how to make this thing. Uh, insert it there. Put the thing I made here and make it look cool. Okay? When I first started this project, I drew my inspiration from nature. I saw how pristine and beautiful it could be. And then I saw how the industrial complex was destroying the world. So I thought, what better representation than a crust robot? Half crustacean, half robot, all deadly. Now that we're all calm and we're thinking about crust robots, let's make one. As you can see here, I have an asset library full of sci-fi greeblies. Greebles, greeblies, no one will ever know. I don't know. But I'm just kind of picking shapes I like. I'm just gonna bash them together. This is where the term kit bash. I know I'll keep up with these uh, terms, greeblies, kit bash. These are technical terms that are hard to learn, and uh, I'm just gonna just gonna kind of stick things together. I'm gonna rotate things. I'm gonna be like, eh, I don't know if I like this. I'm gonna delete that thing. I'm gonna rotate this way, and then uh, I'm gonna look at it some more. You can see the process is super precise. Um, you gotta stay focused the entire time. You cannot lose focus. You can't be watching anything else. You know, you can't be watching your favorite Twitch streamer uh, streaming, streaming whatever the game is that kids are playing these days. You, know, you gotta be focused. Uh, here, look, I found these two. It kind of looks like arms now, I'm thinking. And that's, yeah, that, that looks like some arms there. Okay, cool. And all I did to duplicate it, I put on a mirror modifier on that. I just mirrored it around the, the center object. And here's another little hand thing. Oh, yeah, okay. I'm liking that. That kind of looks like an arm thing. And now I need a big old machine gun. So I want to dig around. I got some machine gun parts in here. Just digging around. There's, there's like a barrel of a machine gun. Boom. That looks... I don't know what I was thinking here, um, but it's just kind of like not the right shape, I think. You know, maybe it's... Mm, no, that isn't it. That's not the right shape. Um, so I'm, I'm going to just mess around with this and say I'm an idiot. That's super stupid. I am i don't want that. Uh, oh, and when I made my asset library, I like... On some of these, I like messed up where the origin points were. So uh, one day I'll have to go back and like fix it all. But it's like, you know, super annoying to do that. You know, so probably not going to. Ah, there we go. That's looking better on this arm. Look at that. Now he's got like a big old machine gun, Gatlin gun thing. I go boom, 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 super awesome. Yeah, I'm I'm digging that. That's a cool looking thing. And basically, this all you're gonna have to do is you're just you're just gonna kind of bash some things together, you know, and uh, come up with uh, cool shapes. And I'm gonna continue doing this for a little while. I'm gonna take a moment to show you where I got all the kits to bash for kit bashing. But these are a few of my favorites. Oleg here. I'm using his kit a lot. I have a few from Amin here, and then I also have, I love Bernard Vanderhorst. His stuff is awesome. So check him out. CG Trader and uh, QBrush and ArtStation are all good places to find this stuff. All right, now I'm starting to add some organic shapes. I use a UV sphere, and then I'm gonna add a multi-res modifier on it, and we're just gonna use the grab brush pretty much and uh, to, to get the main shape. And I'm just gonna use the basic sculpt tool to kind of 
kind of give it a crustacean. Like I'm looking at the shells of crabs. You got these little spikes and uh, valleys and stuff. And so I'm just going to do that and make it look like a crab here. And then uh, I'm going to position it and just copy it. Put one big chunk up on the, on the shoulder there. Just kind of move it a little bit with the grab brush. And it's pretty easy. It's just having fun with this stuff. It's uh, a fun process to see what shows up. Here I'm splitting the two arms apart. I'm gonna add a uh, big old knife. That's it, there it is. I'm just kind of thinking that uh, this knife is pretty sweet. Or maybe his arm should be raised up a little bit. And uh, I'm gonna add, start adding some more pieces to solidify everything. If you're 3D printing things, you need them to be detailed, but you don't want things to be like really loose. Uh, you want to make sure that there's a good amount of, of thickness to every part. And there's uh, a piece from Bernard there, that worm thing. I'm just going to push those teeth inside that, give it kind of a mechanical face there. This thing is looking pretty wicked. It's pretty scary here. Totally enjoying it. Awesome. Let me show you one of the coolest things. So I have this object here and I've added an array modifier and a curve mod modifier. And this allows me to basically make a chain or make it like a backbone out of these mechanical parts. They can just move into place using the curve. So however many uh, of these objects it takes to fill up the whole line, the array modifier will, will make the line and then the curve will put them all in the right shape. This is one of my favorite things about Blender is doing stuff like this. Really awesome. I was just minding my own business using Blender. And I went to enter sculpt mode and then Blender just disappeared, crashed. And I thought, well, that's okay because I have auto save on. I only lost, you know, two minutes worth of work. That auto save is every two minutes, it, it, it does some stuff. Maybe I need to do a little bit of re-sculpting. It's fine, not a big deal, but it didn't auto save. When I went to recover it, I was all the way pretty much back at the beginning. Like I didn't do any of this at all. So, sometimes when the clouds are darkest and the rain is thickest, it's hard to know that you can come out of this. When you're at your lowest low, sometimes it's only a matter of time before the sun comes out again and you can be up at your highest high. So keep trucking on. I'll keep trucking on. All right, I'm back. <laughs> I redid everything as close as I could remember that I had done it. Luckily, I had some video. And here I am adding just some more cables. That adding that cable is actually what killed um, killed Blender the first time I did it. I definitely saved it <laughs> before I added that cable again. Now I'm going to put together some uh, some feet, some little leggies. I'm just going to make one just kind of off to the side here. And then once I have a shape that I kind of like, um, I'm going to add a piston in there to give it some mechanical, like to make it look like it could work. And then I'm just going to use the mirror modifier and I'm going to make four of them. Look at that. Super easy. Now we got four legs, all equally spaced apart. I'm, I'm going to do a few things like uh, make sure that the legs and that gun are actually touching each other. This for 3D printing, you kind of want things that are hanging off to be connected. It's okay to kind of 
uh, become a piece of the the other the other parts. So you don't want normally you want to keep things separated. This time we we want to kind of add strength there. So um, as you can see, the gun kind of clips through the leg a little bit, and that's intentional. Adding some more of the crustaceous uh, shell here around that that base. Really, I didn't have to do much here. It's super easy. I'm gonna add a cable, you know, some cables there. I'm gonna do the same thing. Just add the same modifier. Those cables really add a lot of detail to this. And uh, we're, we're looking pretty darn, pretty darn close to being done here. I'm just uh, applying all the modifiers. I'm joining all the objects together. I'm going to give them one solid, uh, one solid coat, and there we are. There's a guy. I see that maybe we're a little bit thin in the middle. I'm going to add a cable just to give it some more support, and uh, there we are, all done. Every year, thousands of trust robots are euthanized because there aren't enough families willing to feed them their diet of enriched uranium. But you can help. There is hope. You can do two things. One is support this channel by hitting the subscribe button. The other you can do is you can adopt your very own trust robot. By following the link in the description below, you can get the STL file to print your very own. Please, don't let another crush robot suffer and act today. Bye.